Okay, and I'll start recording. Right, hello, and welcome back to Warhammer 2 Total War. I said that this would happen in some of my other streams. <laughs> the uh, update has come. There we go, the shadow and the blade. <laughs> we get the appropriate background on. Uh, and I wanted to have a look at it. I have had a look at it earlier today. But we're going to do a little bit of this. It's probably not going to be a continued campaign. But I'd just like to... I fight for the explore some of the things. The DLC involves the Dark Elves and Skaven, Malus Darkblade, who I believe is a character from a series of books. And uh, here he is here. Malus Darkblade. Who starts off over here in the Dragon Isles. Oh, oh, also, I'll be playing Mortal Empires, not the Eye of the Vortex campaign. We must preserve this so. Because I tend to enjoy the Mortal Empires campaign more than the Vortex campaign. Also, one of the changes for the patch is primarily for the Mortal Empires campaign. Shut up, demon. Yes. So, yeah, we've got Malus Darkblade here, who is possessed by a demon. I believe a demon is a Slanesh. So he has to deal with that every now and then. Uh, over time, the demon gains more power and you have to drink potions to be able to gain control again. Though you can give in to it to make Malus much more powerful in melee for a bit. Hmm. He also starts over here in the Dragon Isles, which is actually a new location added in the Mortal Empires campaign. It's all the way over here. In the uh, south of the Darklands, which is the area, assumably, Game 3 is going to take part in. However, he also starts with Hagrafe, which is all the way over here in Nagarond. Which you get a, uh, what's it called? You get a dilemma early on as to whether you want to hold on to it or not. If you give it up, you get like 20,000 gold, I think it is. Though if you hold on to it, it can be more useful in the long run. Though you do have to defend it. And it's quite a long way away. I mean, it's like across the entire map, so. Uh, and also, the, lord of the, yes. the other lord was Deathmaster Snitch, which is pretty cool. Being the premier assassin of the Skaven. Deathmaster Snitch is very good at what he does. And has been doing it for quite a while. Um... An assassin, like, other schemes and plots around the world. Um, an example of Skaven being really, really good at things, whereas usually they're sort of comedically inept. <laughs> anyway, he has, he's the leader of Clan Eshin. Well, Clan leader. Lord Sneak is the leader of Clan Eshin, but Deathmaster Snitch is the lord for Clan Eshin, because the leaders of the clans don't like themselves. I like his red um, claws. It's an old model touch which I really like. Anyway, uh, he has access to shadowy dealings where you can get missions from other great clans. I think, and if you complete them, you get access to uh, groups of their units. So. Uh, also, the Night Runners and Gutter Runners use armor piercing, warp infused projectiles, which is neat. Uh, what else have we got? It's got a more ambush success chance, melee attack for embedded heroes and lords, and concealment bombs. So he's a lord hunter, whereas Malice Darkblade is more of a attacker for multiple units, I would say. He has an area of effect attack, Malice Darkblade, which deals damage to units around him in combat. Uh, we also have some new units added by the DLC. Bloodrack Medusa is one of them, Scourge Runner Chariot, an anti large chariot, ranged chariot, Deathmaster Snitch. Also, the Skaven have a few other units. These aren't, these aren't the only ones, there's more, but they have ac access to Eshin Triads, which are. Uh, they're sort of like an... Are they the uh, Storm Vermin equivalent? I think so. They're lightly, more lightly armoured. They have anti-large because they have Gwandals. 
They also have armor sundering. Or they have weeping blades, so they reduce the enemy's armor when they hit them. They have concealment bombs too, which is pretty nice. There's also warp grinders. Which is a weapons team which is able to attack walls, which is a new ability. I'd like to see that on some other units. Uh, siege attacker, where they can attack gates. But pretty much every unit can do that. Uh, well, every unit can attack gates. Siege attacker actually allows you to um, attack a city instantly without building siege equipment. Uh, they also have seismic snare, which stops enemies using enemies enemy units moving around them for thirteen seconds, and also warp quake, which deals damage. I had played a brief campaign as Lord Skrulk because one of the other changes made was to clan pestilence. Where they get plagues, bolster your forces, and nurture your settlements. Which I didn't actually realize at the beginning. They also have more higher chance of a plague spreading. I think I created like two or three plagues in my brief playthrough. Um, I think that was for about 50 turns. I actually have the uh, campaign still going. We might continue with that one. Uh, but I think that out of the plagues I created, it didn't actually spread. It might have spread to one army, but out of two or three. So it might be still a bit too low. I don't know. And I haven't seen what the uh, plagues do to your armies. If you get infected. What bonuses you get from that. Also, there was a free lord here For Britonia, I fight. in Rapunz de Leonis, who is a Bretonian lord. She starts over here in Araby. I think she starts in a similar location in the Vortex campaign. Uh, more control for provinces, upkeep reduction for heroes, melee defense for questing knights. She starts with Knight's Vowel and Questing Vowel unlocked. Chivalry plus 10, physical resistance 5% for all physical peasant units. Leadership for peasant units, and she has the ability Halo of Maidenly Wrath, which I think is an area of effect damage spell. It's like a burst of light around her which hurts enemies. So yes, it's a bit nice for Bretonia getting another lord. Mm, so yeah, I think we'll actually continue with my Clan Pestilence campaign. Since, it, it, since it's past the initial hump of the game, it's up to turn 50. And I might play as one of the other lords when some more of the mods have been updated. I tried to play with my usual mod selection, but they haven't been updated yet, so... As you'd expect, considering that the uh, update and patch just came... Uh, update... The patch and the DLC just came out. But I think some of them have been updated because some of the mod, make it, mod authors, I believe, get early access to the DLC. So they can update their mods before it's released, which is nice. But for others, they have to wait until it's released. Mm. Okay, so our Pestilence campaign, so far, as I just play on normal, uh, we have control of this corner of Lustria. Mm, the uh, Dark Elf faction down here is gone, which controls Chupayotl, usually. I forget what his name is. Kraken Lord of Karen Car. <laughs> I can't remember his name. Anyway, uh, so yeah, he's gone. Teclas is uh, still around in the Star Tower. Though the Fuming Serpent has been taken by the Skull Takers. The uh, Clan Fester is around here, up here. 
Temple of Tlenkan. Hello, welcome. Uh, Subatun down here is under siege currently by lizard men. They've got another army of these uh, feral dinosaurs. I fought another one up here, I think done by Itza. Created by Itza. They have a, uh, the lizard men have a right, one of these types of things, where they perform it and they get an army of uh, feral dinosaurs. Which costs a fair bit of money to maintain, but it's quite powerful, though personally I would split them amongst our other armies rather than just attacking with the dinosaurs. They're a threat, uh, on their own certainly. This army, I had auto-resolved this battle, but I wasn't able to defeat the, it actually gave me a loss, even though I think it gives it 50-50. Oh no, they're a bit in, it's a bit in their favour. Uh, so we could deal with that with what we've got, I think, maybe? <laughs> Skaven aren't the best fighters. Our gunner runners might be able to bring down some of them. We'd want to get rid of our... The, uh... Red Crested Skink Lord there, I think it is. Yep. So. We do have Menace Below and Warp Bomb because I have walls here. We might wait until they actually attack with the... So we have the settlement walls. That will give us a bonus... Uh, that will give us a, uh... Advantage. Lord Skrork is over here currently. Looking at attacking Axlotl over here. He's level 6, he's got a variety of spells. He also has Slice in over here. With Wither, Pestilent Breath, Vermintide and Plague. Which would help quite a lot against the uh, Lizardmen. We also have a variety of units. Plague Monks, Clan Rats with Spears, Clan Rats with Swords, some Slaves. We have a unit of Warp Grinders. I also recruited a unit of Poison Wind Waters, which is another new unit from the DLC. Uh, I saw someone mention this. Apparently all the missile damage has a bit of a decrease on it for some reason. They don't. Neither do the Warp Watchers Ales. Uh, oh, missile damage. Yeah, they do too, missile damage. Warp Fire Throwers don't seem to. Escape and Slave sing Slingers... Maybe? Yeah, whatever. So I don't know what that is. <clears throat> there might be a few bugs which need a... What fix for... Yeah, he's got a reduction there as well. Don't have any things which are reducing it up here, so I don't know what that's about. Uh, anything else? Uh, well, the new area which was added on the map, which is quite nice. So over here, this area. Um, quite a few provinces. I think about five in the Darklands, which previously this area was completely empty, and these islands weren't here. You could move along here, because. A Lizardman faction starts down here, and one of the Tomb King's factions starts over here. However, they added these Dragon Isles, which is where Malus Darkblade starts. Uh, they have this province here, which is Desolation of Nagash, which I think has three settlements. It also has a settlement over here called Nagash Shazar, which is apparently where Nagash actually is. Nagash is a big bad in the Warhammer setting. He is a premier necromancer but he was defeated a while ago and rendered sort of inoperable <laughs> you know it's hard to hard to kill something which is undead uh, skaven are actually responsible for him dying they created the fell blade to be able to kill nagash they got someone else to do it for them. I can't remember who. Anyway. Um, I don't think you can get the Felt Blade in this. Can you? Might be an item you can find. The Felt Blade in the tabletop was an immensely powerful sword. Which dealt damage to your user constantly. 
but I gave them strength 10, which is as high as strength as you can get. Uh, but Clan Ashen starts over here, so Deathmaster Snicked will be over here. Uh, there's also this mountain here. Oh, this mountain. Crookback Mountain. And uh, Mount Silverspear. Crookback Mountain is where a Skaven faction starts. I think it's Great Clan Rictus, I think it is. As a faction. Uh, Clan Rictus is actually led by a Skaven called Tretch Craventail. Who is, was a free LC Lord and he actually starts up here. Um, though they've added the Great Clan Rictus down here too, because Crookback Mountain is actually their capital. So I don't know whether Creative Assembly is going to move Tretch from here down to here, or what? I don't know. Uh, what else has been done? Nothing else on the map has changed as far as I'm aware. So yeah, we'll just continue with this for the moment. Uh, I was currently building up my settlements. Got three population, three more turns until we get another one. Construction costs down at the moment. I want to recruit another lord and bolster you with some slaves. Can Lord Skrulk take Gorok here? He has a mace of Ulamak. Gorok is really tough. He is all about defense, pretty much. Mm. Rokovitsa, yeah. 40... <laughs> duration, 24 seconds. Recharge if it's engaged in melee. Plus 44% physical resistance and increases vigor. So... Base of Ulamak. All that. The thing is, is that any lords will flee as long as their army has been reduced enough. So if we killed off his army, he would flee just because the numbers are so much, so depleted. Um, they also have their garrison though. Tesaurus spear, Spears and Skink Cohorts. Two Saurus Spears and three units of Skinks. Hmm. That would be an army of 17 compared to our 20. I would like to have some more units. What have we got to use against them? We have Gisales, which are useful. Poison Wind Mortar, which I would like to see the used. The long ranged bombardment unit. Warp Grinders, which are pretty good. I suppose I find them difficult to use because you have to put them close to melee and they're not very good in melee. So I tend to forget about them and they get caught out. We also have one Plague Claw Catapult. Which is very nice, but maybe we need two. Hmm. I did own Axlotl a little while ago, but Gorok took it from me. I'm going to retreat for now and possibly build up my army a little bit more. Uh, get maybe another lord. I also had another. I also had a uh, warlord, but he died. Uh. Another thing for Clan Eshin with Deathmaster Snitch is that he doesn't have to worry about the uh, loyalty of lords uh, if they're the Master Assassin Lord. I think for every other lord he does have to. Loyalty is a, a scale from 1 to 10. 10 being the highest and 1 being the lowest or 0 being the lowest. When the loyalty of a lord reaches 0 they will rebel and form their own faction. So it's something Skaven have to worry about. Dark Elves also have to worry about that. I am going to recruit another Lord. What would be useful against Lizardmen? Hmm. That's a lot of arm piercing damage for Weapon Master skill. Plus 35. Sure. I thought it was smaller than that. Ah, uh, we'll get you to just recruit a whole bunch of Skaven slaves. <clears throat> we just need numbers. Well, I mean, we can strength out numbers easily. Also, this is the biggest change. 
the turn timer has been reduced in reduced by an awful lot in the last patch. Uh, I think I counted at the beginning of this Clan Pestilence campaign that the timer count went as like 21 seconds. It was 21 seconds, quite an improvement. I think before it was like a minute and a half to two minutes for me. So that is a nice improvement. My computer is not really, not, not exactly the best. The CPU is not that, it's, it's all right. I5. Anyway, uh, Skork gets Pathfinder. Plus three during subterranean intercept battles, chance of intercepting an army using the underway beast paths or world routes. That's useful if we're going up against dwarves or beastmen or wood elves. But there's no wood elves in Lustria. There is beastmen. I think some spawned over here sometime. Uh, oh, also greenskins use the other way. That's right. Greenskins and dwarves. Brom. Yeah, we just recruited you so your leadership is lower. No! Oh! Chupiotl, a, cele a, a, a celebrity storm vermin pit fighter has been slain, but not in the ring. The opponent he was due to face was spotted fleeing with a pack of gutter runners as his porcupine, porcupine corpse breathed its last. While such events are commonplace in the Warrens, the fans have been denied their sport, and that is something that just won't stand. The province is in uproar, and public order has fallen as a result. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, recruit more slaves. And you, uh, what's this? Count Guya, Vicious Gobspit. I think the Greenskins usually start up here, so they've traveled a fair distance. Another thing actually was also, a number of the factions were renamed. Uh, if we have a look here, this is called the Awakening, and the faction is actually called the Awakening. Previously, this faction was called the Vampire Coast. Uh, this is also true for a fairy, for several other factions. Um, in here, this is where the Empire starts under Karl France. Uh, they were called the Empire, but now they're actually called Reichland. I believe they actually changed name to the Empire if you confederate with other Empire factions here, which is nice. The Dwarves down here also were called Dwarves, uh, but they're now called... Oh, what is it? It's either Karaza Karak or Karak Ankor. Might be Karaza Karak. Uh, it's nice because they had the factions named after the race which they are over here. The Vampire Counts were called Vampire Counts. But now they're called Sylvania. Which makes more sense because... It would be like having the High Elves, the uh, Lothurn over here called High Elves, but they're all High Elves. It's just, you know, the faction is named after the, uh, the uh, actual faction flag it has rather than just the race name. Oh, you stopped sieging me. Okay, well that's nice. Uh, get some Night Runners. Uh... And get some slingers too. I find range to be pretty good against these because they get stuck in melee. You can pelt them with shots and they're large targets as well so they're easy to hit with ranged. Casualties amongst my own guys sure but hitting them with like throwing stars and all, the t all that all the time is uh, rather useful for dealing damage with them when you don't have a better way to deal with them. This is why I recruited the Warplock Gisales. They're not anti-large, but they have armor-piercing shots, so and you, so I can pick out the uh, dinosaurs with them. Um, another change which was done, since we're going through changes, is I don't actually have a unit of them anymore. My army, which I had them in, it lost. I lost them. Um, if we go up here, the poison-winged globideers. 
Now the Poison Wing Globideers previously were anti-large short-range missile units. This has been changed. Uh, in a way which I like, I suppose. On the tabletop they were specifically anti-armor units because their missiles, they throw globes of gas at the enemy and the gas shatters and no matter how heavily armored you are, it's most likely not airtight. So then you get breathe in the warpstone gas from the orb and you die a terrible choking death as you drown in your own bodily fluids filling up your lungs. Uh, they were anti-large, the reasoning being that the larger the beast is, the more of the gas that they would inhale, so they'd be better against larger targets. This has been changed in the last patch, and now they're armor-piercing missiles, which they were before, but they were also anti-large, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but they're actually changed just to armor-piercing, but they have an extra effect on their missile damage, which is Poisoned Wind, which deals damage over time for 10 seconds. So when they hit a unit, it actually it has like the effect of dealing damage to the unit constantly. Um, which makes sense because they're releasing clouds of gas and it's gassing the area. Uh, this is quite good against groups of enemy units. However, as I've no as I found, it also affects your own units. So best use poison wing globideers with slaves in the combat. Because you're going to be hitting your own units inevitably. Um but that's quite a nice change. Skaven don't care about friendly fire. That was one of their defining traits on the tabletop. Um, though it was reduced. They used to have an ability called Life is Cheap in the 6th edition. Going on a bit of a tangent and... Any of the Skaven units could fire into melee against other Skaven units. Um, so you could use like Skaven Slaves or Clan Rats to hold down an enemy unit and then you could fire with Warp Lock Desails at the enemy unit at the cost of having a 50-50 chance of hitting your own units. Um, but sometimes you would deem that an acceptable loss, especially if you were holding against say high value enemy units like Chaos Warriors and you want to kill some of them because they're lower in number and you know losing a few Clan Rats there. It's not that bad. Uh, however, that was changed, I think, in the later version, later editions, where the Skaven, only the uh, Poison Wind Globideers could fire into melee. They were the only ones with life as cheap rule. Anyway. Mm. Other races don't get the option to fire into melee, is the big thing. Um, if one of their own units is involved. Of fear of hitting their own units. Uh, right, you're recruiting some more slaves, you're recruiting slaves there. Slaves are pathetic. Poor leadership, terrible stats, expendable. They only have 11 upkeep. <laughs> They're there for bodies. They can kill, barely. They're actually worse in this than they are on the tabletop. Because in the tabletop, they had the stats of a basic Skaven unit, so 3 strength, 3 toughness, the same as a clan rat. Though they had lower weapon strength, weapon skill. So they were less likely to hit, but if they did hit, they were hitting with the same strength as a clan rat. I think that was the same in the later versions, later editions. Let me have a look. Uh, since I have my rule book here. They were also dirt cheap. In a game where Clan rats, I think, cost five points each. Slaves cost like two. <laughs> uh, weapon strength two. Yep, strength three, toughness three. So yes, it was very funny when you say like, "Oh, I killed like twelve of your slaves," and it's like, "Yeah, how many points is that?" Yeah, it's like twenty-four. <laughs> it's like what? That's not even worth one of my guys. Okay, can we deal with you now? We actually get our, uh, what's it called in that, our garrison in that battle. Are you gonna hold? You are! Hmm. Sure, let's fight this battle. I want to get rid of these lizardmen. Dinosaurs. Now the turn times 
turn timer is reduced. However, the uh, load times isn't, I don't think. So still take a little while for the for the uh, map to load in. Not that long. We also have a new lord here, the uh, Master Assassin. Which will be quite neat to see. They're a uh, dual wielding unit. That doesn't take that long. They're a dual wielding unit. I think primarily for dealing with enemy heroes. We also have a Plague Priest. I've gone over this army. Poison Wind Mortars, which will be fun to see. Though they're not very useful against this. Because they're more against blobs of in more useful against blobs of infantry. We also have some Death Globe Bombardiers. Which are a upgraded version of the uh, Poison Winged Globadiers. I don't actually know how they're different now, because the Poison Winged Poison Wind Globadiers kind of act in the way that the Death Globe Bombardiers did. Still a bit iffy about using Death Globe Bombardiers because they weren't a unit on the tabletop. And they, they were the uh, champion or a uh, unit of Globadiers. Okay, slaves go there. You line up there. We have some Plague Monks. They're not very useful in this battle. Poison Wind Mortars. Bombardiers. Night Runners. Our garrison is appearing over here. Clan Pestilence. And Clan Pestilence. Okay. I wish it would tell me which army is which. Be nice. We also have a rattling gun, which is very cool. Again, not very useful against what we're going up against, but they'll be able to pull some shots into the enemy. There we go. Let's have a look at these units. So, the Skaven. I don't think we've seen them in any of my previous battles. Uh, have we fought the Skaven in the Kis... Yeah, we did, in our Kislev campaign and in our... Uh, we actually did fight Skaven in our uh, other two campaigns. Because we're up against Clan Mulder up in Kislev, so... However, this is Clan Pestilence. We have Skaven Slaves, Pathetic, Clan Rats, slightly less Pathetic. We have ones with shields and spears, because I like the anti-large, also since we're going up against large targets, they're useful. Plague Monks, which are disease-ridden fanatical devotees to Plague. We have the Plague Priest, who has the Plague Sensor Bearer here, or Plague Sensor, or Plague Sensor Bearer, that's a unit. Uh, <laughs> he also can cast spells. Uh, what else do we have around here? Death Glow Bombardiers. They look like poison wind mortars, except purple. They have the large globes filled with poison gas. I don't know about the eff lightning effect on things. They added that in a few patches ago. It's four warpstone items, and it makes sense for some things, but I think in some cases they've gone a bit overboard with it. Um, like, it looks good on the orbs there. These are the rattling guns. But I don't know about on the cabling. Anyway. Rattling guns. They're uh, crank powered machine guns. Very useful against large blobs of units. They also have an ability where they uh, suppress enemy units and slow them down when they're under fire from them. They also have armor piercing shots. They don't have... Uh, are, they, uh, dami are their attacks miss... Are their missile damage magical? They should be. Uh, because all the shots... The Death Glow Bombardier's ammo ammunition is magical. Rattling the Rattling Gun's ammunition isn't, isn't uh, magical. The reason for that is because Skaven use a lot of Warpstone in their weaponry. Most, a lot of their attacks for their weapon teams, or pretty much all of the attacks for their weapon teams, count as magical because they have Warpstone in them. Plague the uh, Plague Priest here does magical attacks because if he's Plague Sensor. Poison wind mortars are magical because of the uh, gas in their globes. So, also these have some really great animations. Of them wearing their gas masks and all that. 
That's a massive like pipe on this back, which they use to launch the uh, globes. You can see the one behind him is ducking away. <laughs> Ooh. Uh. <laughs> I was really worried there for a second. But yeah, they're neat. I like the uh, unit variation. Is there much unit variation? Oh, in the clothes they're wearing. Maybe. They're wearing gas masks, so. Uh, Skaven Slave Slingers. Something I'd never consider getting on the tabletop. Because they makes the slaves cost too much. But they're more useful here, just for volume. And Night Runners. For a bit more ranged damage dealing. They're sneaky. They throw throwing stars. I prefer the throwing stars to the slingers. Hmm. And we have the dinosaurs over here. Oh, actually, we didn't see the uh, Master Assassin. There he is. <laughs> Doing neat ninja kicks and all that. The majority of the game are badly trained, or ill-trained. However, the assassins are not. They are very good at what they do. He has two claw blades, which is pretty cool. Now, uh, what's his abilities? Oh, he just spun around. <laughs> um, he has frenzy? No, that's not right. Unit mutant. Also, get plague monks. Scurry away, stalk. Ah, while moving, he throws throwing stars, which do a lot of damage. Also, poison attacks. He has weeping blade weapons, so it's minus fifty percent armor whenever he hits something. Bonus versus infantry, armor um, PSA, not very useful here. He's a duelist also. Oh, he also has physical resistance, that's pretty cool. And the lizards, the dinosaurs. We have Bastilodons, giant, heavily armored dinosaur things. Primarily defensive, but they can take a lot of punishment because they're heavily armored, but they're not that destructive in melee. Stegodons. A more offensive version of the Bastilodon, kind of a direct upgrade, except they have less armor. Carnosaurs. T-Rexes, pretty much. <laughs> very big, very nasty. Very good at dealing with groups of enemy units. And their lord, the Red Crested Skink, who has a large two-handed weapon. All these dinosaurs are, uh, or monsters as they're called in this, are, uh, what are they called? They've all got Rampage because they're feral, so if we hurt them enough they will lose control and they'll just run around attacking units on their own, which doesn't mean much because they'll just keep attacking us, but... So yes, let's start this battle. Actually, stay back. Because we're going to need our reinforcements. Ah yes, you're going to go over for them, aren't you? Well, that's going to split their forces up. So that's fine. Get that garrison down here. Let's see, plague mortars fire. Poomph. So they're shelling the area. They're not dealing that much damage. They do deal damage over time because of the poisoned wind. Also, all these cause terror? Yes. So our units are probably going to flee pretty easily. <laughs> oh well, what can you do? Send the slaves in. Night runners, stay away from them. They're bad. Okay, we can make things a bit easier for our guys by poisoning their weapons with a spell. do not do much. Attack that. Stay out of melee. Rattling guns start firing off. <laughs> it's not even fair. Daka, 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 daka. 
This is why I like the Skaven. They've got ridiculously high-tech weapons compared to everything else in the Warhammer setting. Okay, just attack those. Oh, hello. You actually came over here to attack me. Go over there. Charge it! Don't let them get to my rattling guns. Those things are more valuable than your lives. We also have warp bombs, which is not very useful against the single target entities. Warp bombs means I sacrifice a unit and they explode, dealing damage to enemy units nearby. But that's more useful against infantry than monsters. Why didn't you flee? One of them did. Get out of there. Stop firing. You're going to be killing my own guys. Daka, 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 daka. Assassin! Go after the uh, skink. Aha! We could also summon some units from the menace below. That'd be useful. Chase that dinosaur down. How are you going against him? <laughs> Come on. Oh yeah. Slice. Get that thing out of here. I don't want to see it. Daka 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 daka. Well, look at how much damage you do. We oh, are. Yeah. Use the throwing star against him. We oh, yeah. are. You missed. Where's all that great training? Ready to kill. Oh, yeah. Did you hit him? The rattling guns are going to finish off your shot. We oh, yeah. are. Yeah, you hit him, but. Yeah, you hurt him. Come on. Oh yeah. He actually throws a few um, throwing stars each shot, so. Oh, he's out of range. Move up. Move over there. Did we kill him? He is shattered, though, so that's all right. Cool. Get rid of that feral carnivore, actually. Oh yeah, it's more useful, it seems, against infantry than uh, single targets. Pretty cool, though. And there we go. That was pretty easy. Ugh. We lost about a thousand? No. Just under a thousand? Actually. I think we lost about a thousand overall. <laughs> and they only deployed ten units. And I don't think we actually killed any one of the dinosaurs. Oh well. So yes, the dinosaurs are nasty. But because they're feral, they have lower leadership. They flee rather easily. They'd be more of a threat if they had unit other units with them. Skaven anti-large choices would be warp fire, warp lightning cannon, primarily. Okay, you're fleeing over there. Hey, we got a talisman of pers preservation. That's pretty good. Especially with his physical resistance. Go finish him off. Ambush! There we go. That was easy. Uh, do I want to sell them off? Sure. <clears throat> we get some more money for that. Uh...
So death glow bombardiers. I'm a piercing anti-infantry. Oh, they don't have the uh, poison wind effect on their shots. The deck, the death globes, have a. Uh, I think no, they deal more immediate damage. When the death globes hit the target, they explode. Unlike the poison wind globes, which uh, deal a damage over time when they hit. The uh, death globes actually explode and deal damage immediately. So they don't deal damage over time. So they're better at, like, tearing up units faster. Whereas the Poison Wing Globes deal more damage over time. Uh. Hmm. What fire throws are anti infantry? Rattling guns are anti infantry. What block does ails? A unit of those would be nice. Sure. Uh, Eshen Triads would be good against uh, large. Also, if I got them, Storm Vermin with Hellbirds. So, my own rules. Head rules means I would only have like one unit of them in an army. Uh, go over here. Recruit more slaves. Do I want to go up another level with you? I can get gutter runners and gutter runners with slings. Kind of odd that they've got ones with poison and ones with, without poison. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> another change for the Skaven, which is not something we've seen in my games because I haven't played as Skaven yet, is their, uh, where is it? Their economy has been changed. Previously, they had this tree here, the energy tree, and it had two levels down here. Uh, those be those have been removed and the income from all the the income from all buildings bonus here is also been reduced. Previously level 5 was income from all buildings plus 100%. And it started at 50 I think, 50, 60, 70, 80 no. 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. But it's been reduced. I think In, as an aside for that, the overall income generated by other buildings has been increased. But not by a large amount? That's 160. I think that used to be like 80. So in some cases it's been doubled, I believe. Which is interesting. I suppose it means that they, the Skaven will have to put effort into building up their settlements to get a lot of in to get their income high rather than just you know making a whole bunch of buildings and then building this and they were able to get quite a bit of income from the beginning anyway uh do i want to upgrade this to the pestilent nave we need two of those actually leave bubonics bubonicus pox cauldron oh is that the base building it is. Okay, so we just need another one of those. Hmm. Kind of want to keep the hidden lair here. Plus one capacity for assassins. We could actually recruit an assassin. Enables poisoned attacks. Arm piercing damage plus five. Melee attack plus three. Leadership plus four. Do I want you now? My income's rather low. Uh, hmm. Hmm. We have a warp fire thrower here. I want another warp block to sail. I would like another, uh... What's it called? Time to do it, leaders. Plague Claw Catapult, which we need the construction cavern for. Get rid of you. <clears throat> Get Upgrade the scavenge pile there. Actually, no. How much is that? 600. How much is this? 300. Upgrade the gold smelter. 
and upgrade you. Sure. Plus four. Uh, we can get Wither on you. Oh, you have two levels. Get Plague Rash as well. And what can you get? Tougher than he seems. Hit points plus 10%. That's about 300 hit points. Inspiring Presence, Route Marcher. The uh, Master Assassins don't have that many new abilities. Tougher than he seems is new. Rat Fu is new. These are the same. This tree is new. Expert Ambusher. Sure. Increases leadership aura size during ambushes and ambush success chance plus 15%. Stab in the back. Uh, increased speed and missile damage. Concealment bombs for night runners and gutter runners in his army. That's pretty nice. Uh, Shuriken Jitsu. Missile damage plus 10% for night runners and gutter runners. That's pretty nice. Especially if you did with Infiltrator, which increases decreases their reload time and increases their speed. And Crackle Bolts, which is... Oh, it's a ranged projectile, and it deals magical and fire damage. Oh! <clears throat> That's actually, I think, the same as a weapon which the uh, Vampire Coast get. They're, uh... What's it called? They're gunnery right. Gunnery whites get a uh, crackle bomb ability. It's like a grenade he lobs from his gun. Hello, welcome. I said it would happen, and it happened. We're playing some Warhammer, too. So, uh, what do I want to get with you? Mm, let's get an inspiring presence. Oh, we have three levels. Why did I get three? We fought one battle, we fought another. At most we should have gotten two levels. Eh, whatever. I'm not complaining. Uh, get Inspiring Presence. Hmm. What's your army made up of, actually? The usual. Respected and feared. Open strength. Force. Plague monks. Blast Master. That, that increases for all weapon teams. That's nice. Uh, let's see. Night Runners and Gunner Runners upgrade. Reload time reduction and speed. Eh. There's no bonuses for slaves. Oh, the engineering skill actually increases warp grinders. So, does that... What's that? Speed increase for warp grinders. Armor increase for warp grinders. That would be useful. So, does this stack with the Blast Master? Because that's for scaven weapon teams, and warp grinders do count as a weapon team, don't they? Or is one? Yeah, they count as a weapons team. Wait, you can't hover over those anymore? No, fast we. Used to be able to hover over that and it would say a little bit about ready, ready. the uh, unit. Eh, anyway, uh, so yeah, maybe it accounts for both. I mean, they're both they're different bonuses. Uh, you can get inspiring presence. You can get oh, we got inspiring presence. I forgot to reduce remove the point when I went out of out of that get pack leader. Just increase your store, um, your clan rats Victory. effectiveness. Also, something else which I <laughs> was going to note a few times, but I kept forgetting. There's actually new Lord images here. I have 2D portals currently on. You can have 3D portals, which has a animated 3D model, animated image of the unit there instead. But they've actually done neat 2D portraits for all the lords, which is nice. You see Teclas over there. Not, the uh, not for all the lords. The uh, generals, the, the basic generals like the Skaven Assassin and Warlord are still 3D. But all the legendary lords like Lord Skulk and Teclas have a nice little portrait now. Which is quite nice. Uh, 
I believe I originally turned the portholes off of 3D to 2D because with 3D it made the game run a bit slower. <laughs> so having it off makes things run a bit smoother. Uh, 10 turns for that. Right. What is that? Is that an island? Yeah, sure. Whatever. Okay. Um, You're staying there. Yeah, we don't have enough gold for anything else. End turn. Enjoy that glorious end turn time. There's less time for me to talk in between turns. Yep, yep. <clears throat> so, I'm removing a building. One of the scrap piles. <clears throat> I'm gonna build the uh, what's it called? Construction cavern there instead, so that we can get some engineers and also some more plague claw catapults. Engineers will be useful. I'll be able to get some under cities going. Oh, we got a bell polisher. Yes, yes. I want it so shiny that you can see your face in it, and I can eat a manling off it. Zero capacity. Plus one for plague priests and Eshen sorcerers now. That's new. Uh, Eshen Sorcerers are a new unit. We can't get any currently. But they have a new lore of magic. Skaven Spells of Stealth, which is... It's not a lore in the rule books, which I know of. <laughs> um, I believe it's from a sub... Well, I know the Skaven... Esh the Clan Eshen army list is made from a... Extra rules, an extra army rule, army list in the sixth edition, where where you could play as one of the great clans with a bunch of sort of made up units for them. But I don't think it had a new spell a new spell law with that. It might have been one later on, but it had a bunch of spells. Skitter Leap has been moved from the spells of ruin. Instead, they have Flensing Ruin now. Which is a damage over time spell. And the Skaven spells of stealth now have Skitter Leap. Skitter Leap on the tabletop with a teleport. Do I enjoy the Civilization games? Uh, kind of. I have Civilization 3 and 4. I prefer 4 over 3 because the combat's not percentage based. Um, I don't play too many of those turn based types. So. Uh, out of them, mm, out of those types, I've played more of Master of Magic than the Civilization series, which is based on Civilization 1, I think. Uh, so yes, Skitter Leap. Rather than teleporting you, uh, teleporting you, a unit increases their speed, Dork and Unspottable. Warp Stars deals damage. Armor of Darkness increases armor of missile resistance, which is nice. Veil of Shadows is an area denial spell. It, like stops units from moving through this vortex, which is interesting. Doesn't cause damage. Overcasting it actually slows units down and lowers their leadership. Brittle Bones lowers melee defense, speed and vigor. And Black Whirlwind, which is a large Stationary Vortex, which deals a lot of damage. Which is quite neat. So yes. Um, hmm. Landscape. Are we at war with the dwarves over here? Nope. About the XCOM games? Uh, I've played UFO Defense and maybe a bit of Terror of the Deep. Uh, the original ones. I do have the first remake XCOM game and I nearly finished it but then I hit a bug and I wasn't able to finish the last mission so it kind of killed my enthusiasm to play it again. I haven't played the more recent ones since then and I believe they patched it. It was rather buggy on release so. What's the problem? I think I had a vehicle in that mission and it got stuck and I couldn't end my turn because I couldn't move it. Uh, Right, I was going to build that. I don't have enough gold. We're going to need more gold. Box rats. 
Need more gold. Uh, go over here. You're recruiting. Four rockers there. Can we like... Sitting there? No. There's not enough room. I was going to say, is there like a little gap which we can sit in against these mountains and raid their region? Doesn't seem like it. Go into Silbertoon. You are recruiting. Ah, uh, Giselle. Okay, we'll be able to perform another rite of, or scheme of plague. Though out of the XCOM series, I do think I like the original ones more. And I have played them a little bit, not recently. Uh, what are you doing? You're performing actions against my army. That is not nice. Please don't do that. Pestilence all, all powerful, but more slaves needed, more gold, more warpstone. Yes. Eh. Uh, Luther Harkin here. Twitchy you may be, Rodent, but even you must understand the value of a treaty. You want a non-aggression pact. You're not at war with Clan Fester up here. You're unreliable. You hate lizardmen. You're a schemer and you're a naval aggressor. And you're aggressive. Sure. Can we get some money for you from that? Hmm, maybe? No more scavengers, are you? Enough bar- No mere scavengers, are you? Enough bargaining, I accept. Okay. Oh, that was the rebel faction performing assault units on our army. Damn you! That was a lot. Managed to kill quite a few of my skavens. Whatever. Can't go there and we can't raid in the same turn. Go to there. An ambush. Just so that you can't be picked on by the uh, enemy unit. Uh, enemy hero. Mm, what do I want? Get plague again. Are you just slowly recovering your army? Or is... Hmm. Go with her. I'm shadow, yes. Hmm? I'm looking at it wrong. I thought this army was uninjured. Yeah, well, whatever. Uh, okay, well, um, hmm. I'm going to move you up here. And we need a bit more gold before I can build the construction caverns. We can get the pestilence scheme. Actually, that will spend some gold, but whatever. No gloss. Go to Axlossal. And you're trying to build an epic city. Barbarians are ruining it. Uh. I'm trying to build an empire, but lizardmen are not being co co not being cooperative. They're rather against the idea of being wiped out by Skaven. Ah, okay, yeah. The dwarves are called Karazakarak. Beastmen are still called Beastmen. 
whether you bargain or not, not. You want a peace treaty. You're all the way over here. Sure. That will stop you from sending armies over my way, at least. You're heading off. Because I successfully hid. It's kind of weird playing this game without any mods. Raid the following region. Ooh, a lot of. Fine. Ooh. Mission issued. Carry out a successful assassination attempt, wound or kill against the following character. Vanola. We get Scroll of Amber. Hmm. Absorbs leadership from enemies. Uh, maybe? Move there. Start raiding. Move up. We move up. In camp. I want you to spread plague up there, please. When you get there. Plagues are not as debilitating for clan pestilence, because they're the clan which primarily uses plagues, as we saw, they can get bonuses if their armies are under effect of a plague. I've never used plagues too much. I find that they don't spread out enough, and they don't deal that much. <laughs> they don't do that much, so I don't tend to bother when I'm playing a Skaven with them. Any clan can create plagues, but Clan Pestilence gets a discount to creating them. As well as the bonuses if their armies get infected. Other factions if their army get infected. Other Skaven armies or factions if their armies get infected. <laughs> uh, get hurt by them. Like the enemy do so. It can backfire which is quite appropriate. Well you lost your army. <laughs> the age of the rat is here. Here. Tribute is demanded. Right, you skits, let's have a pact. Um, sure, whatever. This better work. You're the one that has suggested it. It's turn times. Much better. Okay, keep going up. How far can you move? Hmm. I'm going to sit down here. Okay. Uh, can we actually talk to you? Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> we welcome the rat enemy's offering of their sacrifice. Yeah. Tehenowin here has a large grudge against the Skaven, so he's not very interested in talking to us. Minus 60 aversion. <laughs> aversion. Though I think all the Lizardmen have a large aversion to Skaven. Yep. Gorok's mace make you dead. You must be exterminated. Oh, you're at war with a uh, clan mange. I wonder where they are. No argument. No arguing. No agreement. Only death. Enemies of Lustria delivered to Gorok. Okay. Gorok would be interesting to play as. I think his start is quite easy because he starts... He's a powerful lord on his own, but he starts with a character called Lord Croak. Which is a very powerful... Undead Slan, who has a very, who's got very powerful spells, good for taking out individual units and or everything in an area. Whereas other lizardmen factions, I think, actually have to complete a quest line to be able to get Lord Croak.
Are you going to take the blood swamps? No? You attack and you attacked and won, but you didn't take it. Okay, whatever. Redhorn tribe has been defeated. Hmm. Vicious gobspit is sailing around. Okay, and we have enough gold now, so get that construction cavern also because I want warlock engineers mm, you uh, move to there and start raiding and you raid too Skaven also have another resource, food, because Skaven eat a lot of food. We have food stores. The higher it is, the more bonuses we get. We can spend food in the creation of under, uh, in the creation of, uh, Undercities? Armies require one food to maintain. Settlements main require food to maintain as well. Um, so... I think, yeah, each settlement we have takes one food to maintain. Though, so you might see over there it says food capacity, but that's not food per turn, that's like extra storage space for food. Uh, a unit, a building which produces food is uh, this one. Corrupted spawning pool. Produces five food per turn. So, also if we had under cities, they would cost food as well. Okay, spread plague. Blur. He died, but he gave his life for the greater plague. Go. I don't want you to go. I don't think you can get there. I'm going to just move to there. Yoink. Hopefully you get infected with plague. That will make you easier to deal with. Hey, he is. Oh, and we got infected with plague. That will actually give us some bonuses. I want to see what those bonuses are. For the enemy, getting plague lowers their leadership and also causes them to suffer attrition on their army. A thousand gold for a peace treaty. You must be pretty desperate. Two thousand? Sure. We're not going to fight you right now, but getting some more money out of the deal is, uh, well, good. Wrong loyalty critical! A skittish messenger shuffles in from Skaven Blight. The harvests are failing and they need our help. There is status to be gained in helping them if you can. If you will. Minus 2,500 food. Uh, minus 2,500 gold. Or minus... Or, and plus one loyalty. Or we get 2,500 gold. And lose... One loyalty. This is for Brom. Uh... Brom's law lo loyalty, I think it was three before, so it will be two now. We can't really afford to lower it again. It will go to one. That won't be zero, so he won't rebel. But. Um, I don't know why it's dropping so much. He is lower, lo lower level than... Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter if he does. His army is made of slaves. That's kind of pathetic. Sure, I'll take your money. Skaven Blight has not bounced back. More requests pour in. Your inaction may have worsened the situation. Will you? Can you make it right? Okay, so we lost a loyalty point there. We have a chance to get it back and lose the money, which we just got. Or we can uh, lose another point of loyalty and deny the funds. No, let them rot. That actually reduces leadership by minus six. So it, we could take... 
free gold, but we get a leadership reduction for 20 turns. Fine. Capitulate and agree. So shall be art plate, Lord. Uh, so his leadership is now, loyalty is now, yeah, two. Uh, ah, uh, it's fine, whatever. Plague! Oh, his force has been affected by plague. Oh, all my armies have been affected by plague. So yes, they're plague. Minus, mi not, minus nine leadership, and they suffer attrition. Quite bad attrition, too. We get bonuses, because we're clan pestilence. This force has been infected with a plague. It may sprint to nearby settlements or armies. Casualty replenishment rate plus 10%. Passive ability frenzy. Attribute unbreakable. Really? Wow, my entire army has unbreakable. That's that's pretty good. Definitely go and attack. There. Uh, you can get Lord Skrok. What do I want with you? Uh, get the Plague Lord level 2. That will mean we can get more Plague Priests. Also lowering the upkeep cost of our uh, Plague Monks, which is nice. In his army, at least. Okay, oh, we've got one, po one more point until we can get up to rank 5. So we're not going to have enough gold. Next turn, though, we'll be able to attack Axolotl. The Plague here will also be causing issues with their public order, I think? No. Okay. There is another mechanic added in this patch. Um, one which I didn't notice. Previously in the last patch, the one before the last, the one before yesterday, uh, they changed how sight over provinces worked. Previously, you were able to see the entire region which you controlled. Um, then they changed it so that you could see only around the settlement. However, in the last patch, they actually changed it so that the amount of sight you can see is dependent on the public order. So the more public order you have in a province, the more you can see in a province. Or the more you can see in a region. So if it's up to 100, I assume that you're able to uh, see the entire province. And as it lowers, you end up being able to see less and less. Which is interesting. Hmm... I get here. Enormous caches. Murder descents. Descent dissenters. Get carved under tunnels. That way we'll get a bit of a movement bonus. Yes, yes, you're moving units. Hmm. How many turns have we gone past so far? I think I started like turn 50? 50, 51? I think I was averaging about 10 turns in every session. Certainly be able to do more this time. Look at that. Oh, that's great. Another loyalty issue for Brom. This is because his loyalty is low, so the game's giving us chances to increase his loyalty. Uh, massive messages arrive for Skaverblight. The petulant, angry little Skaven slaves have risen up. The Lords of Decay have requested forces to suppress the treachery. What will you do? We can refuse to send forces, or we can send forces. We suffer attrition because uh, we're sending forces away, but he'll gain loyalty for that. Sure, send forces. Praise and thanks for the seers of your aid. However, they still request just a small donation to aid the final quashing of this horrid rebellion. We can refuse and we get gold, or we can send the donation, don't gain any gold, and get loyalty plus two. Sure. That will increase his uh, loyalty up to five. 
heavy attrition, but whatever. Lord Skrulk, go and attack. They're in a bad situation right now because they're plagued, they're badly injured, and their leadership is lowered. That makes plagues a lot more enticing now that also we get a bonus from it. All of our units are unbreakable! Oh, that's great. Sheer numbers. Increase the menace below. Yeah, and we've got poison wind mortars and all that. I was actually surprised that they added warp grinders. Out of all the weapons teams, that was the one which I was least... Uh, I thought we would see the least. Because they're very... They found a use for them. In the tabletop, the warp grinders were primarily used to tunnel units onto the battlefield. Onto the tabletop. So you would attach a warp grinder to a unit and you could use them to make that unit pop up on the battlefield at some point. Uh, in this, they used as a movement denial and uh, damage over time in an area around them. They can also deal some damage in melee, but they're not great melee combatants. I don't think they were on the tabletop either. They were sort of just there to get your units up on the map. It's just kind of a pity that they don't have that type of tunneling on the map, but on in the game. But yeah. dwarf miners could do the same thing. Right there, we got some rat ogres. And where's a good hill for you to sit on? Over there. What's your range? It's not that far. Plague wind mortars don't have that much. Don't don't have that far range. Got fire thrower. Hmm. Plague claw catapult. I kind of want to put you over there. You can get protected by these guys as they come in. Both of my armies are appearing from over there? Okay, that's fine. Ooh, actually. Lord Skrulk! Go there. You go over there. You, 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 and you. Gisales! Actually, let's have a look at them. Gisales! Long ranged rifles. Sniper, sniper rifles. They have a shield in front of them. Which protects the uh, weapons team. Very nice. I like the model of these. I have about five of them in my army. Which is about how many you had in the unit on the tabletop. Five or six. Uh, now rat ogres. Big hulking monstrosities of mutated skaven sewn together with various weapons attached to their hands. Uh, it might be nice if we had a little of like plague effect on our units when we're plagued. Just like a little green cloud, perhaps. Poison wind mortars, I've seen those. Warp grinders. It's a tunneling device. A long spike of warp stone, which they drill through the earth with. Warp fire thrower. It's a flamethrower with a barrel of flame flame liquid on the backs of one of them. And plague claw catapults. A very simple catapult which fires loads of gunk at the enemy. Which lowers their leadership and also does nasty damage. Okay. Oh, also. I don't think we saw Lord Skrulk. Lord Skrulk! The uh, second in command of Clan Pestilence. Um, the leader of Clan Pestilence is. Who is it? Nurglitch. I forget which number it is. The leader of Clan Pestilence is always called Nurglitch, but there's been several Nurglitches, so they get a number. I think it's up to like Nurglitch 7. The se Nurglitch 7th or something. Anyway. He has a plague sensor. And a large bound book. 
He also has a bell around his neck. On the tabletop, he had this bell, which meant that every time he was hit in combat, the bell would ring and he'd potentially regenerate wounds. I don't think he has regeneration. But the uh, Lever Bubonicus on his back is an item he can get and it gives him damage over, damage over time aura as an ability, I think, as well as increasing his magical points. It's also a bit of a case where I don't think it needs the light warp stone effect on it. That's a bit too much, I feel. But anyway, because it gets in the way of the nice... Uh, Oh, hello. Bam! 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 Shoot them! Oh, they're tossing the slaves up into the air. Well, that's what they're there for. Uh. Oh, what was that? Okay, you move up. Oh, hello. Actually, we can prevent that. Go there. Go like that. You two go there. You three go there. We also have this as a poison poisoned wind water. Another one. You can go. Actually, just stand around here. You can fire over the tree line. And you can move up. You lucky slaves! They're dead! Just burn them! Go over there. Ooh. Nice! Time for plague! <laughs> Attack! Oh, they're running away from it. Oh, well. Get over there. Excellent breath. Oh my rattling. Warp lock to sales. I don't guess retreat from there. Bless it, horned ones. Yeah. Yeah, we're gassing our own units. Yeah. Waters. Just throw units at them. Oh, that's right, you have to be quite close to be able to cast that, don't you? Ah, oh, there we go. What's that? Poison Wind Waters. Yeah. Turn around. Go, 
Stop them. Smack. Sorus are quite mean. Did you kill off one of my wards? Maybe. Uh, well, they're holding. Oh, they're unbreakable. Why are they as unbreak? Why are those unbreakable? Oh, is that because of uh, Gorok? No, Gorok's shattered. Does he have an ability which makes his army unbreakable? No. Why are they all unbreakable? My units are unbreakable, why are theirs? Uh... Oh, we had some more... We had Descalo Bombardiers. Okay, ah, uh, well, whatever. We're pretty much one. No, wait, not all the... Yeah, not all the units are unbreakable. Their Lord wasn't. The, uh, Skinks weren't. Only the Saurus are. Poison Wind, Primal Instincts, that doesn't make them unbreakable. I don't know. Oh Lord Skrulk! My guys won't flee, but... They'll also fight to the death, which isn't ideal. Death Glow Bombardiers. Just destroying a unit. Very nice. Win. Lord Eight. And you. Good shot. Why are they still unbreakable? Hmm. Yeah, whatever. Lord oh, now they're not. Or did we kill them? I think we killed them. Okay. That was a bit weird, but... Uh, they must have had a bonus which I didn't see. Hmm. Oh, we lost a plague priest. Oh well. He'll be he's easily replaced. You know, we lost a unit of Gisales. Yeah. Perhaps if I had held back, moved my armies together, whatever. Why were they? I can't see now. Oh well. And you'll see we can actually spend food to increase the uh, settlement level lowers our food up here but increases the uh 
ranking of the settlement. It's quite nice. You can expand the Under Empire, but I would actually like to own it. So we'll do that. Yeah, he died. Do that. Build walls. And... Hmm. Get timber. Get the growth fats. I guess a rat ogre's in our army. Uh, you can get wither level three. You can get pack leader. Because that's what your army is primarily made of right now. Your army is just made up of slaves. Inspiring presence is really all you need. Get root marcher. Your army is badly depleted. Ah uh, yes, I'd also like to actually grade Oxil. So do that rather than build the growth fats here. Level 3, we don't need the breeding pits. Sure, get the woodman's hut. If the plague would spread to Itza, that would be nice. Hmm. I think plagues give benefits to our settlements if we get plague in our settlements. Uh, so we can like purposely spread it amongst our regions, though it will eventually wear off. Do not not think right. to threaten Skrulk. My plague monks are hungry. Uh, twitchy, you maybe. Yeah, okay, it's that again. Hmm. Sure. I have no interest in attacking you at the moment. I wasn't actually sure whether we'd be able to get a uh, non-aggression pact or whatever with those uh, vampire coasts there because they're a rebel faction. They tend to be a bit more uh, aggressive than normal factions. I'm going to have to move you out of this province. Comes. <laughs> All suffer. Scary, oh, actually, we can just move you over there. Go there. Underworld. <laughs> we can get K Clan Vulcan's Tail Slashes, a regiment of renowned clan rats units which has frenzy. Oh no, that's all, that's because of our plague. They have flaming attacks on their weapons. That's it. Uh, yeah, what's that, what's the plague here do? Ooh, plague. Uh, growth plus 30. Construction time minus 50% for all buildings and income from all buildings plus 50%. Wow, that's, that's good. Uh, it's very beneficial to spread plague to your own settlements as clan pestilence. Speaking of which, uh, you, you're looking a bit poorly. Go down to Subatoon. Go in there. Spread plague. I think plague will spread naturally or on its own, but if you put a unit in a settlement, I think there's a higher chance that you'll get the plague there. So, plague also wears off after a while. Uh, we'll have the plague for... How many, will it, how many turns will Plague last here? Three turns. Sorry. I don't know how long it lasts on an army, it's not saying. Maybe for about the same. Uh, if we went into Itza, would we spread the Plague to Itza? That would be nice if we could. Disease bringing us as we are. Hmm... That 
that makes plagues a lot more useful. I think I've said that a few times, but previously I've never used them because they'd peter out too easily. That might still be a problem because it's easier for plagues to spread only for pestilence. Clan pestilence. If you play as clan scryer, the plagues, I believe, would spread as normal. And also if your armies get infected, as I've said, it, it hurts you. Which makes sense for other clans. So it kind of means that if you're not clan pestilence, you should possibly leave plagues alone. Anyway, it's nice how you can use them to your advantage now. Oh, you lost your plague. So did you. Oh no, you didn't. Lord Scrock still has plague. <laughs> Maybe he should get permanent plague. <laughs> nah, that would be a bit much, I think. Okay, go over here. We want... That, 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 and... Warp block to sales, and... Another Plague Claw Catapult? Sure. We've got some more slaves after that. Hey Brom! Go into Super Tune. Give them the plague! The plague! Uh. Right, oh yes, we've got that now. Get a Warlock Engineer! Get Biofitch of Black Chasm. And we can send you over to Itza. Because there is also an undercity building which spreads plague. Which Clan Pestilence has access to, which is nice. Zamdilla. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a high elf, high elf name. Superior. Borg Zap Scrutal. Can help. We much bigger and smarter than you. You You want military alliance? No thanks, you're at war with a lot of lizard men. I'm not interested in being dragged into that. If you're asking me for that, you're most likely losing. Gotta think about my own hide. Did those green skins just die against Teclas there? Thirteen ways to die. The Council of Thirteen has decreed that the Warlock Engineers must step up their research efforts on pain of death. A breathtakingly grisly list of execution methods has been circulated, each devised by the twelve Earthbound Council members. The Thirteenth being, simply, a sacrifice to the Horned Rat. Unsurprisingly, your research, rats have re your research rate has increased faction-wise. <laughs> oh, plus 100%. Damn good. That cuts the time in half. Thank you, thank you. Uh, did you get the plague again? No. Okay, you got that. Got some more slaves. Actually... Get two units of plague monks. Lord Scroll gets a... Decrease to the cost of plague monks. I would like another warlock engineer. I need to go up another level. No, I don't. I need to go up another two levels. Ah. Oh, and you don't have the plague anymore. You didn't spread it. Go back up. Try and get it again. <laughs> I'd really like to spread it amongst my settlement. Who's this? Kuakitsa. That's a sacred croxigore. 
Can't get the pestilence scheme again. Seven turns. We can get the other one, so. Uh, the dominating scheme, the thirteenth scheme, gives us the pestilence clan stone, which gives us poison attacks in an area of effect. In an area around the stone. Also increases hero action success chance. Diplomatic relations plus 13 with Skaven. Or we could get the Scheme of Doom! Establish an undercity or cause a catastrophic earthquake there. Hmm. Alright. You are a free Skaven. I have a job for you. You are going to go all the way over here. Not to Skaven Blight, but we can see it on the way. You cost... yeah you do, 260. Okay. In turn! Yeah, we've had like 14 turns since I started. This decreased turn time is much nicer. That's including with like two battles. Very, very nice. Oh no, you didn't die. The turn timer could possibly be improved a little bit more I'm being greedy. <laughs> but it's still pretty damn fast. Much better than it was. Thank you very much for that. Another bell polisher. Ah, production quotas. Uh, yeah, we're going for carve under tunnels. Recipe record uh, effective recipes. Oh, we're not going to get that. No, how how long is this uh, research thingy? Three turns. One, two, three. Mm. Yeah, fine. Whatever. Just go for that. These are always one turn. Volatile plans, virulent plans, oppressive plans. They're all one turn. So. It doesn't really matter which ones of those we get. Oh, the plague has petered out in the settlement. Boo! Six more turns until we can get another plague priest, though. We can spread more plague! Everyone will have the plague. Uh... Oh yeah, you lost a plague priest, didn't you? Get... Vermis, because he reduces the uh, income cost of warp stone weapons. You can move. So if I move you here, you'll have to go up through there. Yeah, sure, that's fine. Whatever. Oh, your name is Pestilost. Probably one issue which I have a bit too much problem with in the Skaven is that the uh, default names for the Skaven doesn't tend to make sense based on what their affiliation is. <laughs> like this plague priest is called Vermis, which Vermis, which makes sense. Oh, and Brom is fine for a Skaven lord. File Fitch is a bit weird for a warlock engineer though. Um, it's mostly a problem when you have like a warlock engineer and he's called like, I don't know, something which sounds plaguey. He's like, eh. I don't think they can restrict it based on their um, clan affiliation though. Fortified entries. Uh, do we want that? Hmm. 300. Actually, yes. No, because we... Nah, it's fine. I was going to say no, because we're not getting the bonus of the plague anymore. But that's redu that was reducing the uh, build time. Oh, and Lord Skrulk lost the plague as well. I, I am blind to this. 
You may hear every now and then Lord Skrulk saying things like, I'm blind! Uh, he is. Though he is still able to see. What was it? Lord Skrulk went to Skaven Blight, laid his eyes upon Nurglitch, I think it was, the leader of Clan Pestilence, and he thought the sight was so glorious and glorious and plaguy that he clawed his own eyes out. And the great horned rat for Lord Skrulk's devotion gave him sight again. But he sees everything, I think, in like sickly hues and like sees the inevitable death of everything. He's odd for a Skaven. Though I think that counts true for a lot of the main lords for the Skaven. That's probably why they're the leaders. Or lords. Ikit Claw is very devoted and very skilled at his craft. Deathmaster Snitch is very skilled at assassination. Queek Headtaker is normal for the most part, except for talking to the trophy skulls he's taken. Carmelian Skinks and Skink Skirmishes. Oh, you're sieging Zlan Huapek. Might have to go with the green skins if I want that. Hmm. Who hasn't moved? Brom hasn't moved. Uh. Go over there. You go over there. You've moved. You've got that reward. Travel in the underway. Skaven also can travel in the underway. <laughs> oh, you're attacking me. Oh, it's Gorok. You're attacking Brom first. Okay. Can we defeat that army? Lot of lizard men. Hmm. We do have a lot of slaves. We had we don't have the uh, benefits of plague now. We do have a plague priest. We don't have plague the spell. We have wither, which is useful against their armor. We also have casts of the menace below. However, it's not as useful as it would normally be for me because I do not have the mod permanent summons activated, which I do like. Hmm. Uh. Could Mutin deal with Gorok? Probably not. Could Mutin and Brom deal with Gorok? Possibly. Sure. Let's try this. Plus nine! It might be the last battle to round out this session, though. So. As I said at the beginning, we probably won't return to this Plan Pestilence campaign. I might wait until the mods have been updated before I do another Warhammer 2 stream. I just wanted to do this to show off some of the uh, new patch and updates in it. Also because I wanted to play it. Because, hey, it's a new update. Uh... Oh, why is... Right, because Gorok attacked my army, which was behind my others, so... That's kind of annoying. It's 
going to split up his forces to attack both of mine. I would prefer if you didn't do that. Hey, slaves. Hide in the uh, forest. <laughs> okay, he's actually going to have to hunt me down if he's... I am all hidden in the forest! Sound up. Sound. Yep. The sound in this game is quite low. For some reason. Just normally. Okay. He's over there. Oh, there they come. Skink skirmishes. Deal with those. Go on, slaves. There. You get there. You get there. From you go there. Slaves, you move all in front of there. Oh, no, no. Slave, sacrifice yourself for my units. Clan rats, run! Slaves, hold them off! I don't care about the slave slingers and all that. They can die for all I care. Okay. Go over here. I mean, that's what they're there for. Fast him. Bombardiers. Warm them off. Plagues? No, not plagues. Slaves. What was I saying? Why did I say plagues? I'm trying to be witty, and it did come out right. Okay, war block to Zales. Yes! What can we shoot? Uh. Nasty things die. Probably mentioned before, one of the things of Skaven is that they call everything which isn't a Skaven thing. I believe it's their way of sort of saying everything else is inferior to Skaven. Very nice. What sails got there? Let's get the slaves move up. Death Globe Bombardiers, you move over here. Are you unbreakable? No, you're not. I don't know why you were before. You, you are night runners. Shell that area, please. Pull back a bit. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, is it hurting our own units? Uh, game of slaves. There we go. Poisoned wind. Yes. <laughs> It's killing our own units, but they're slaves, so it doesn't matter. 
That's what they're there for. It's so fun to be Skaven. Move up. Charge them. Charge them. That's a nice group of, uh, thingies you have there. Poison wing bombardiers. Throw into melee. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, are you hitting slaves? Oh well. Don't worry. For every slave you kill, that means there's more food for the rest of us. Poison with waters. Shoot over there. No. Uh oh. Units are fleeing. That's not good. Charge them. Slaves. What if you go over there? Shoot Gorok. There's another unit there. Well. Turn around. Chuck some poison wing death globes at them. <laughs> Get them. You probably won't kill any, but that's not your point. That's not why you're there. <laughs> and Gorok dies to a hail of Giselle fire. Bam! Nearly. Bam! Bam! There he goes. The rock of Itza has fallen. Again. <laughs> We've actually beaten him a few times now. Oh, it's just terrible. <laughs> this game is so bad. <laughs> Uh, I just love the scaving technology. And we haven't even gotten to like the really fun stuff with Doom Wheels or Warp Lightning Cannons. Anyway. Oh, Pyrrhic victory. Well, we did lose quite a few. But that was fine. Look at how, look at how many they killed. Pretty much every unit killed a hundred of ours. But we still won. Because all of our losses were acceptable. Perhaps. No, they were we also killed Gorok again. Defeated Gorok. One of their units got 273 kills. <laughs> they must have been fighting slaves the whole time. Slaves die so easily. But that's what they're there for. Oh, and you had the Lichbone Pendant. Pendant. Well, whatever. Seven food. Nice amount of gold. War banner. Ooh. Plus five leadership. Well. 
that's more useful than the magic resistance. Send, send them away. Sell off. I grow stronger. Oh, that's something actually. I kind of think maybe Clan Pestilence should have the option uh, when you ransom that you infect the remains of the army with a plague. Uh, because you're like, you know, diseasing the captives and then you let them loose again without them realizing it and then they go back to town and they infect the uh, settlement that'd be neat that's something which the which clan pestilence do i think there's actually a short story of that in one of the scaven rule books from a road figure approaches you, Lord. His face is obscured by a mouldering hood, but a grey and ragged muzzle protrudes. It is an accursed grey seer. Council, in their arrogance, of course, ask no. Ask no. Demand payment towards the realization of plans yet unexplained. This one has come to collect. He wants 2,000 gold. And we get plus loyalty. Or we refuse a donation. Which gives us weapon strength plus 15. Denying a Gracia his desires of it is its own reward, no matter the repercussions. For 20 turns. Minus one loyalty, though. That's one, that's rather nice. But Brom has, like, three loyalty again. Sure, refuse. Oh, we didn't get a second one for that? I mean, you know, he's not going to do much with that. Whatever. Hmm... Get looter. Uh, you can get evasion. You can expand the under empire underneath Itza. Thank you. Oh, they have a, uh, oh, that's their characters. Okay, so Wonder Empires. This has also changed somewhat. Let's see. Burrows, Underkeep, the way Nexus. Clan Pestilence actually got their own building. Rat King. Right, this is to summon an army there. And this one. Oh, this is the unique one. Uh, Plague Cauldron Cradle. With zealous chanting and uproarious ceremony, the Pestilent Cauldron shall be raised into its foul scaffold. Uh, discoverability plus 80. Grand Plague Cauldron. When the cauldron spills over, plagues and worse pour forth from its blighted depths. An unending plague will be unleashed upon building completion, blighting all above until the undercity is destroyed. Ooh, that's pretty nice. Game of Corruption in adjacent provinces plus 20. Uh, only consumes one food. Discoverability is 100 though, so you're going to need... Uh, both of these buildings. Kill perches and deeper tunnels. That would be minus 80. So that would mean this would have no discoverability. That's quite nice though. Uh, that would be better somewhere else which is far away. We're probably going to take it so soon. I mean. So what do you get? Oh, you get Flinsing Ruin now instead of Skitter Leap, which was there. Okay. Yep. Mm. You can get. Mm, get Death Frenzy. That'll be useful against the scary lizard men. You can go to Axel. Axolotl. And you can continue sailing away across the seas. So yes, under cities are a nice way to generate income. Uh, Itza here is generating 2,000 gold per turn. If we built... Uh, this one, Thieves Hidey Holes, we would be able to sap 20% of that income, not actually reducing the settlement's income, but we gain 
income based off of the income of that settlement. So 2,000, we will get 20% of 2,000. Up to 30%, up to 50%. So as you can see, the discoverability goes up. So we need to have these stealth buildings to be able to, or concealment buildings to be able to lower the discoverability. If a undercity is discovered, um, <clears throat> enemy heroes can remove it. And they just have to pay gold to remove it. So. However. Would actually create a plague in the settlement. So let's see. All up. Concealment is up to minus 80. So plus 100. You would have plus 20. Least. That's actually reasonably well hidden. And you can reduce that further by having a hero in the region. Yeah, characters are minus 10 there currently. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. I don't think there's any other changes. I don't think I saw anything else. Raiding camp. Uh, no. Scavenge hold. No, that's for generating food. That just generates flat income. That's off the settlement. This one can be useful if the settlement's not generating enough in of enough income to make this worth it. Uh, mine shafts is to expand the undercity, so you can expand it automatically. Like, can expand every turn into a neighboring province, which is nice. Warpstone refinery reduces upkeep, increases recruit rank for weapon teams. Increases research rate and increases winds and magic power reserve. I honestly can't say I've just I've used that one too much. I tend to use undercities to generate more income. And subterranean strip mine. Which has a large discoverability. Reduces construction costs. Increases trade. Uh, also increases a raising of that settlement by 300%. Gives local armies warp bomb. I don't tend to build that either. <laughs> that would be useful if you're up against a powerful settlement and you want to get a huge amount of money off of it by sacking. Discoverability on the Rat King is 140? Hmm. So that's actually easier. So, okay. Okay, that will go down to like 60. These ones, I don't tend to build these either. This helps you get around. This one helps you get around as well. Also enables lightning strikes. I don't tend to use these. I mean, you can't hide an army in an undercity. So, you don't tend to want to remain in an enemy province because they'll send an enemy region because they'll send an army to attack you. Um, because you're most likely at war with them and sending your army into an enemy region which you're not at war with, they can see you. So. Anyway, uh, we have done... Yeah, about 16 turns. That's pretty good. Between me waffling and battles, however, that will be it for Warhammer 2 for tonight. This is probably, as I said, going to be a one-off, just to show off some of the stuff in the update, other than the, uh, what's it called? Other than the, um, new lords, which I imagine most other people are showing off. Oh yes, hello! Welcome. Thank you for the raid. I was just finishing up though. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I am just stopping. Apologies. But... <laughs> Hello everyone who is here. Thank you very much. But I have just been... I'm just stopping a bit of <laughs> Warhammer 2 Total War. 
for those who come, I tend to do Warhammer. I've been doing some Monkey Island 2. <laughs> and, uh, so on and so forth. So, you're welcome to come by any time. Raid someone else. Hmm. Just a moment. Well, I'll stop the recording for Warhammer 2 here.